Hello, I'm Craig from Carsalt Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2019 Expert Curriculum. Download Microsoft's files linked in the description to work through them together as we begin Section 2.2, Format and Validate Data. Let's get started. All right, so let's open up our Excel 2.2 workbook, and we're going to go to the Custom Data Formatting tab. So that's the one here on the bottom left-hand side here. Once we're at this tab, we want to go to cell A1 and I'm going to highlight all of those cells and we're going to create and apply a custom number format. And this particular one is going to display the thousand separator. It will always display at least one number. It's going to display a leading minus sign for negative numbers and red text if a negative number is entered. We want it to do a zero if a zero is entered and a message of enter a number if a non-numeric value is entered. All right, so there's quite a bit there to unpack. Uh, so let's go into our uh, format of control box. So I've just hit uh, control one here. There we go, it's opened up here. And this time in the category section, I'm gonna go down to custom. Uh, so when we wanna do a custom number format, uh, what we want to do here is this line right under type we can type in the format that we want Excel to use for our particular data. So in this case, we want to use a thousand separator. And so to do that, I'm going to use my pound sign, a comma, two pounds uh, after that, and then a zero. And what that will do is indicate to Excel that we want to have a thousand separator. The pound signs are placeholders. So if there's no data there, or, or not enough data, it'll just be blank. Uh, but if there is, it will make sure to add the comma in the right point. The zero behaves a little bit differently in that it will always display that zero or at least one digit, uh, no matter what's been entered, uh, what number has been entered into it. So after I've done that, I'm gonna do a semicolon, which is my separator from the positive number treatment. And now we move into the negative number treatment. So next we want to uh, have a color. So in this case, we're going to use red and we can just use red, uh, the word in order to call that out. You can't necessarily do that with every color, uh, but I believe there's there's a number of colors that you can call out directly by name. Um, we're going to do a minus sign to indicate that it's a negative number. And then we're going to do the same pattern of a pound, excuse me, a pound, a comma, two more pounds, and then a zero. Now our second, so this is my negative number section here, everything from the first semicolon through to the second. After the semi, second semicolon, it's our zero behavior. So if there's a zero, we want a zero entered. Now, normally when I work, I don't want a zero entered when there's a zero. I want a, uh, I want a, a dash or a, a hash uh, minus sign basically to, to show me that there's no values entered, but that, that's another discussion. Lastly, we want if there is a text or non-numeric value entered, we want it to say enter a number. So let's put a quotation mark, enter a number, and a close quotation mark. So again, to walk through this, we have our three semicolons. Here's one here, a second one here, excuse me, the second one's here, and then the third one's afterwards. I'm just gonna add a space there to make that a little easier to find. So positive numbers get treated by the command before the first semicolon there. Negative numbers are this section here, are zero, treatment is there, and then non-numeric is at the end here. So let's click okay. Okay, perfect. So now we can see that our positive number has now added a thousand separator. Our negative number is in the color of red with a minus sign. Our zero is still showing as a zero and our non-numeric uh, entry where we had typed in the number one now shows as enter a number. Next, we want to move into cell uh, B1. We're gonna create a custom number format that displays the thousand separator and the decimal point always displays at least one digit before and after the decimal point and displays degrees Celsius at the end. So then we're gonna hit control one as our shortcut to open up our format cells. Once we're in here, I can hit alt C to select category and then I can toggle through the C's to get to custom. If I hit alt T, I can get into the entry box to enter my custom format. So like before we want to use the um, the uh, thousand separator. So I'm going to pound, comma, 
pound pound. And then we want always one digit at least shown, as well as one decimal point shown. So by going 0, 0, .0 we have that happen. Uh, next, what we want is the degrees Celsius at the end. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to have a quotation mark. I'm going to enter my degree symbol, and I'm going to use an alt code, which is alt 0176, in order to get my degree symbol, and then Celsius at the end. Once I close that off with a second quotation mark, you'll notice that my sample here now shows 98.6 degrees Celsius. If I wanted to, I could add a space before that, uh, after the quotation mark. And we'll click OK. Sure enough, that works here. Let's test it out here by doing a small number of uh, 0.75. So it's now forced that into a single decimal point, and it's rounded it up for me. Let's also see if it works with a large number. So let's go 2,500 degrees, and I'm going to widen that out. Sure enough, it has my 1,000 separator. Uh, my decimal point is still there as well. All right, next we're going to select the range in from C1 to C2. All right, and we will go into our Format Cell dialog box by Control-1. We'll go into our Category, and then into Custom, uh, and then adjust the type. Okay, so in this case we want a uh, custom number format that has a six-digit entry with a dash after the first two digits, the text account number before the digits, and the text enter numbers only if any non-numeric characters are entered. All right, so let's start off uh, with a quotation mark. And then we're going to put account, a space, and then a pound, uh, excuse me, a pound sign. Now, because that pound sign is inside of the quotation marks, uh, it will still show up here. Normally, the pound sign is a special character, uh, and, it, and it won't show up for us. So because it's inside that quotation mark, you can see that it has been forced to show up in our sample here. So next we want to enter the controls for the numbers and what we want is two digits, a hyphen, and then four more digits. Now you'll notice in this case I used zeros rather than the pound sign. And what happens with a zero? If a zero is in the custom format, it forces that digit to be displayed. So if we entered in um, the number 27, it would show all of these leading numbers for us. And, and we'll, we'll run through that once uh, I complete this. So now that that portion of it is done, we have to enter three semicolons, which takes us from positive number, negative number, zero, and then into the non-numeric section. And now we need it to enter, enter numbers only as directed in our example here. So once that is completed, we'll hit OK. And I will widen that up here a little bit. OK, and so now you can see it displays 98, 7654 with the hyphen in there. Now, if I have a number that's really small, like 27, what you'll find is it now fills in those leading zeros to that number for me. Had I used hyphens, or excuse me, had I used pounds in the custom text formatting, uh, it would have, or the custom number format, it would have just left those spaces blank and wouldn't have inserted those, those extra zeros, those leading zeros. Next, we're going to select cell D1 and create a custom date format. So again, control one to get to our format cells dialog. You'll notice that Excel in my example has already noticed that this is a date. And, and one kind of trick when you do a custom format is you don't always have to come up with it from scratch. Uh, you'll notice there's a, a scroll bar here with all sorts of formats that are already displayed. Usually what I'll do is I will modify one of these that already exists uh, and just tweak it a little bit to get the result that I want. Now with the text and with the, the practice tests that you've been doing, you probably could now create a custom format right from scratch. But again, a lot of times I will see what's already here and just make a quick adjustment to it. So if uh, in this case we want to have a two-digit day, excuse me, two-digit month, two-digit day, and a two-digit year, I can take a look and see if there's any formats that are like that for me. 
Um, so here's one that's day, month, month with a, uh, with a dash. So I don't want that, but uh, I may see, oh, okay, three M's is going to give me uh, three letters for the, the month. That might be a good t trick for me to, uh, or a shortcut for me in the future. But I'm going to delete any of them that are here uh, and go back to uh, a blank form. And so a two-digit month is going to be an MM, a period for the, the divider, day will be two Ds, and then for a year, two Ys. Now I can see in my sample here at the top what's gonna, how the selected cell is going to look once I click OK. And sure enough, I have the format that they've requested here. All right, next we're going to select cell E1, and we're going to create a custom time format. Uh, so let's go to E1. It's selected here. We'll hit Control-1, our shortcut for format cells. And if we don't want to use the keyboard shortcuts, I'll demonstrate really quickly here. Uh, if we go to our Home tab uh, and into our number section, there is this little pop-out arrow. If I click this with my mouse, uh, that gives me my number format select uh, message box. So uh, w once you get the hang of it, Control-1 is really uh, easy, and, and it's, this is actually a, a call-out box that you'll use quite a bit. It's probably worth memorizing. Uh, but now that we have it open, we are going to have a two-digit hour and a two-digit minute with nothing in between them. So that's going to be HH, MM, and then what we're going to have is a space, and then the text hours. So a quotation mark, a space, and the text hours, a close quotation mark. And sure enough, that's done for us. Uh, now you'll notice here that this is a 24 hour time clock. Uh, so it's once we've gone past uh, into the PMs, it, it's not going to revert back to, to say 3.10 PM like it's showing up here. It's going to show us a, a, as a full 24 hour clock. All right, so that wraps up this first section of practice tasks in Objective 2.2. Uh, make sure you thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll look forward to you joining me as we continue in Section 2.2 in our next video. Thanks for watching.